All right, guys, here's where we're at in the investigation. Now, I'm talking about Antonio McKee versus John Smith. Did it happen? I made a piece a week ago, and I really don't want to relive that. I'm going to assume that you've seen it. If I condescend to you guys, that's on you. I put it out there. But did this match happen? That's all I want to know. And I don't have any ability to prove it. There's no tape, by example. There's not a holy grail tape out there, and it's in my possession, and I'm going to be loading it up in the VHS tonight. It's not like that. I don't think that there was a tape. USA Wrestling was on a very low budget. They just didn't document things like this. iPhones just weren't a thing. If somebody would have filmed that with a camcorder, that could be true. But guys, this is 32 years ago. Where's that tape going to be? My mother filmed my matches from back in that time. I was in the sixth grade. I don't have those tapes. I just don't know where they are. So I don't think we can uncover it that way is my point. Now, I have asked everybody that you could possibly ask. I have even got a hold of the Smith family. They're saying the match didn't happen. Antonio McKee has now been a little bit clearer on the score of the match. I was loose on that when I talked to you guys first. Ah, it was 11-9. Ah, it was 10-8. Antonio McKee's a little clearer on the score of the match, and he's got it at 10-3. Now, I don't believe the score of the match was 10-3, but I can't hold that against Antonio McKee. Who's going to remember the score of a match? And in all fairness, it just didn't work. Antonio McKee said it was, it, it was 10-3. He said, but I was taken down five times. I learned so much from John Smith. He was the best guy that I had ever wrestled. He did two, two things. One, he came to a two-knee high crotch, and the other one, he went to a low-level single. Antonio McKee is a high-level wrestling coach himself, and he says he teaches John Smith's techniques to his kids. He was very respectful. But there's never been a time in a wrestling match where you could have five takedowns and only have three points. Now, again, that doesn't disprove the story. We don't have proof on the story. But you're never going to have a whole bunch of people that come forward and say it happened versus a whole bunch of people that come forward and say it didn't happen. And that, that can't, that doesn't work. You could have people that verify Antonio's story and say it did happen versus people that say, I haven't heard of it. Right? Do you see where that's about? You can't see it and then proclaim it didn't happen. It's one of those things. And if you did not see it, you can't proclaim it didn't happen. You can only say that you don't know. We have to find some witnesses. Now, I've only got one, and it's Big John McCarthy. And this was a conversation that we had in passing. This was four years ago, and Big John never once thought I was going to come and tell this story to the world. But Big John doesn't forget a damn thing, and he was there. He wrestled in the event. Now, when I tell you that you could have a guy as good as John Smith enter a side tournament, and there'd be no documentation, and nobody would know all these years later. Guys, it's true. I was there for one. Thurston... High school, right here in Oregon. And back when we used to do freestyle, it was always an open. All freestyle season was an open, and you would have these former college guys come back. We had club teams around town. The Thunderbolts come to mind. They would enter every single one of these tournaments, these older guys. So I'm down at a kids' wrestling tournament that my father put me in the truck and drove me down to. The year is 1993 and entered into the tournament, didn't even bring his singlet, so he wrestled the entire open tournament in sweatpants and a t-shirt, was Kendall Cross. Kendall Cross happened to be in town. This is the reigning Olympian who goes on to be the next Olympian as well as well as the gold medal. He's wrestling in shorts and a t- I apologize, sweatpants and a t-shirt because he didn't have a singlet. So these things did happen. I watched Travis West and Matt Lindlin go at it at a side tournament where they didn't even have a referee. So an 11-year-old kid put the bands on and went out and scored the match. The whole nation knew about that. There's no video of that either. This is before the internet. This is before people had cell phones. The whole nation knew this story within 15 minutes. You cannot be a top guy and lose in a side tournament and have the community not know. So here's what we're going to need to do. First off, yes, I need to go back to Big John. I need to really pin him down. What did you see and how sure are you that you saw it? Was this a match? Were they in singlets? If they're not in singlets, we're stopping this whole conversation. That's a workout. Was there a referee? If there was no referee, we're stopping this conversation. It was a workout. I don't care what they called it. They don't get to make a match. You have a referee, you have singlets, you have the, the full time or don't you? We need to pin this down. What was the score? What happened? But what was the memories that you would have? If you, I remember when Kendall Cross showed up to this tournament. He had four matches. He actually had to wrestle that day. But I remember this. There is zero chance 
that you're going to be in a wrestling aficionado and see John Smith lose a match and not know exactly how you felt. So I could go to Big John. I haven't done that yet. I could go to Big John. But Antonio McKee offered one more piece of evidence. He said that Pat Smith was there. And he even said this big belt buckle that Pat Smith was wearing. Now, the likelihood of Pat being there in 1989 is small. That would have made Pat a senior, if not a junior in high school. And to take an authoritative position of traveling around with Corner and helping to manage his brother, who's a three-time world champion and gold, gold medal in the Olympic game, it just would have been rare. However, Antonio could have had it wrong, said Pat Smith, and meant to say Leroy. Now, that would make sense, because Leroy was John's coach. But what I'm trying to prove is, if I go to Pat Smith, who says that this didn't happen, I haven't fully proved it yet, because I don't think Antonio's right when he said Pat in the first place. I think he meant to say Leroy. Small detail. But who are you going to go to, right? All we know is Big John. We haven't gone to him yet. Going to John in a side conversation and not explaining how much you're looking for eyewitnesses is, is a little bit of a different talk. So let's start with John. Okay, now we got one more clue. We got one more clue, which is Antonio McKee said he was John's second opponent that day. That John wrestled J.D. Hawkins and John teched J.D. Hawkins in less than one minute. Okay, I just got a name. Because we are going to investigate this. This is not going to die here. We are going to get resolution. I am prepared to hold a trial. John will have a representative. If he wants that to be himself or somebody else, he will be represented. Somebody out of Dell City is going to speak up on John's behalf, and somebody's going to speak up on Antonio's behalf. That might be Antonio himself, but there's going to be a trial. I am going to adjudicate it, and we will have a jury. We will get resolution to this. That's what I'm assuring you guys. I'm just sharing with you some of the problems that I'm having as the lead investigator of this case. And now I got a clue. J.D. Hawkins, who I happen to know. Now, I haven't seen Coach Hawkins in a number of years. I remember Coach Hawkins because he was a complete stranger when we walked up and told him we were eating food. We were in this line eating food. He looks great. Hawkins, Coach, amazing. He said to me, you know, my only secret, he said, don't eat anything that didn't have eyes. Just eat fish and meat. It's got to have eyes. If it has eyes, eat it. If it doesn't, don't. I just remember this conversation, but the point is this. I've now gone and looked for J.D. Hawkins, and I did this through Christian Pyle. I need Christian Pyle a little bit more involved in this case, by the way, but I went to Christian Pyle, the head mouth of Flow Wrestling. So I need to talk to J.D. Hawkins. Can you make the introduction? Can you set us up? Group text. He said no, which is not what Pyle usually says. He said no. He said, why is that? Well, it turns out our lead witness passed away. So Antonio McKee, who offered two names, one Pat Smith that I personally think he just had the wrong brother, and second, J.D. Hawkins, I can't get to him for obvious reasons. So I'm now left back to Big John, but I also need to talk to Antonio because Antonio warmed up with somebody. He was cornered and coached by somebody, and most likely to somebody. Somebody officiated that match. And moreover, there would have been witnesses. Maybe Antonio had a team there. Maybe he had two or three guys there. Maybe he had his son there. I don't know. What I'm sharing with you is we are going to get these names. The only names that I have for you right now, and I've worked on this around the clock, is Big John, who I've not gone back to. I will. John's one call away. I just haven't done it. And J.D. Hawkins, which turned out, passed away. So this investigation is ongoing. I, I am going to uncover what happened here. That's the update. If you know anything about this match, if there's anything that you could do to help before we get to trial, speak now.